My name is Jay Lovelace. I'm a Trinidadian painter. I make, I would say, more or less figurative paintings. I've been around creative people um, from an early age because my, my dad is a writer. Through, um, I guess, his uh, influence um, and circle, I should say, circle of friends and, and you know, um, co-artists, etc. So yeah, um, I can't say that I was always making art from a young age. I, I think I was more just um, around that world, you know, and listening and observing. And maybe something does bubble inside of one, um, oneself. Um, just being around that environment. So that's quite possible, but I actually didn't start drawing and you know doing anything to do with art until uh, later on, like around 14 in um, high school. It's kind of like when everybody gets a chance to <clears throat> do art class, I guess, and um, I got a chance to work, I think, well, to, to be in the class of an artist who was teaching then. Um, his name is Jackie Hingston. Um, he's a watercolorist from Trinidad. Well, he's more than a watercolorist, but his watercolors are very well known. Um, he also paints in oils and does sculpture. He's still practicing now. Um, so I always credit him with um, being the person who sort of like just gave me that little spark, you know, um, of interest that maybe it's something I could pursue. I mean, I've been working full time as an artist ever since I you know, could remember, well, since leaving school, really, art school. Um, but I don't think I showed regularly, you know? I, I kind of had periods where I wouldn't be showing, but I'll be working. So hopefully it's all kind of gelling now and I get, I'm getting a chance to show more often and stuff like that. I, I think, you know, I, I feel like I'm a person that um, my personality or my character, if you would, um, is drawn to a wide range of things, you know? I think that makes things both can, can be possibly interesting, but also difficult because I have such a wide range of interests. Um, I think it's just the way that I am. Like I said, it's a, I don't think it's something that's necessarily an artistic decision. I think it's before that. It's just, you know, I, I tend to be drawn to um, people. I'm also drawn to, to nature, um, to certain types of <clears throat> aesthetics, I guess. Um, formal things that I like or I'm drawn to, like the way things are arranged. You know, they, they, there's just such a sort of big range of things that actually draw me and make me feel inspired or um, call me to attention, if you would. So I think, I, I think my work, in a sense, tries to um, touch on many of those things. I think when you look at my work, you'll see a range of themes, a range of approaches sometimes. Um, and even how I paint is quite varied in terms of the surface, in terms of the techniques that I use. Um, so I think a big part of my journey has been to um, stay true to that initial feeling or instinct, which is to be open, to be, to embrace many things, you know, to find a way to embrace many things and have them expressed in the work that I'm doing, not to narrow it down, to keep it very broad. Or in terms of how I feel, I still see myself as an artist, you know, with a broad, taking a broad view of my experience, you know, um, and that experience comes a lot from being in Trinidad and the people I see there, um, the things we do, the places that I see, the plants that are, that are around me, you know, those are the things that um, are informing my work. Been discovering and rediscovering uh, many artists in my region, you know, who have kind of informed um, or put something into my consciousness, which has to do with, you know, how do I express or see um, Trinidad and the Caribbean through my work, you know? Um, because, I mean, in the end, I guess, 
most of the styles that you see in art are styles that are borrowed or that are coming from different places, you know, different regions internationally. A place like Trinidad is a kind of amalgamation of histories and you know, layering of histories, both European and African and Indian and, you know, um, indigenous. So there's a lot of information always coming in. So it's, you know, I, f I feel like I've always tried to be open to all that information and seeing how it can develop, um, you know, instinctively or intuitively in my work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, um, there's, there's been a lot of, I would say, rediscovering those artists who have tried to find a language um, to speak about being in the Caribbean. You know, what is it like? What do, what is, what do paintings look like there? And what can they look like? And yeah, that's an interesting question, one that I'm still working out, I guess, you know. One of the things that I'm drawn to in making art is that it allows me to, um, to have multiple approaches to doing something, you know. I, I get easily, um, I guess, I wouldn't, bored is for lack of a better word, but I, I do lose interest in something if I'm not um, challenging myself in terms of how I'm making it. I don't quite engage unless I can take chances and almost go into an unknown place, you know, when I start things and even while I'm working on them. I'm constantly trying to set up problems for myself to solve, you know, and in solving those problems, I kind of discover something about making art, about making paintings and about myself, you know. Um, it's an intuitive process, but, you know, I guess the nuts and bolts is that I start with, um, you know, many of the paintings, because they are modular, because they are panels that are sometimes separate, I, you know, I kind of, um, I can start with just playing with color, you know, just pushing things around, being very um, loose and abstract about things without a clear idea of what it's going to become. And I feel like that is very liberating as a beginning. I've always had a very playful imagination, you know, imagining things in clouds, imagining things in the landscape. So I guess that does come into play as an artist. So if you play with abstract shapes and stuff, there are things that start to emerge, whether they're figurative things, whether they're something that might make you think of a certain light or a certain time of day. Over the years, I've been trying to discover how I could make a painting that doesn't put, um, that where the process is longer. You know, to not kind of just go towards an image too quickly. Um, let the image emerge, let there be a certain interplay between the image and the non-image and just the physicality of the, the object itself. Um, to let all those things really be um, as important as maybe an image or a figure um, or even an idea, you know of what I'm doing. So that kind of openness has been very liberating. It's something that I had to cultivate, you know, over time um, to make sure that it is part of my process. So I feel like all the paintings I make now really try to, you know, include some aspect of play. Um, and as I move forward, I would introduce more drawing elements um, sometimes I might introduce, you know, um, harder shapes and stuff and the painting sort of ch just sorts of kind of starts to layer itself and um, um, the fact that I'm working on panels as well is a, is a big <clears throat> um, part of the process as well because I think I've started to, over the last several years, start to really play with the idea that um, the paintings are made up of four separate pieces that, you know, I want, want to recognize that they are separate pieces. But at the same time, I am a painter that's making a kind of single image painting, if you would. You know, I'm not making a, a fragmented um, image. The, the fragments always lead to one scene, if you would, you know. So it's a little different to um, like a montage, you know. So, yeah, so, so I mean, stylistically, I'm still making one picture, 
from a very loose place, they kind of climb to this place where they, there can be an image or there can be a scene. Um, and I'm constantly layering ideas one on top of the next until I feel like something has happened. When I'm putting them together, I use just simply tape at the back of them to hold them together. Um, that allows me to also take the tape off and to remove panels sometimes or switch panels up um, that I have in the studio. Um, this is also part of that, you know, play with um, shapes and, and various panels. Um, yeah, so it allows me to, 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 to be very malleable with how I lay out those panels. So the tape is what I use to hold it. And then, you know, if I want to change things around, I can take the tape off and then reapply it and then hang it back up. And, and I just continue like that. When I finish, of course, it's kind of um, a little bit more elaborate with backings and stuff like that. And that's how the paintings look now. Um, but yes, in the studio, they're just, boards that are clipped up and I kind of I'm switching them around a lot I am changing paintings on the wall all the time so yeah it's quite a di dynamic process I don't make one painting and then move to the next painting I make several things at the same time um, there's a lot going on in the studio and then a few things start to emerge it wasn't something that just um, that I woke up with this idea or something and started doing it. It was something that really just evolved with time, um, which are sometimes, but mostly the things that I trust, the things that just I've lived with for a long time that I didn't even realize that I was living with and slowly became part of my method and my consciousness about how I was approaching my work, everything. So um, I used to use them. It's, it's a board that, you know, you find in Trinidad to, you know, you find it in various stationary stores and stuff. This particular one um, I found in, these partic in one particular store and um, the quality was quite good. Um, people bring them to Trinidad to bind books, um, government books, um, files and stuff like that. So that's apparently why they, they were, this board was shipped or, or was shipped to Trinidad in, in a large quantity. So I started to use it as a substitute for um, canvas and for paper even, um, to make drawings and to be more experimental. You know, sometimes it's kind of nice to have a material where it's relatively accessible, um, not super expensive, but still, you know, it was important that it was um, archival, you know, it lasts. So um, I started, you know, just using it either for drawings or small paintings as one panel. And with time, of course, you know, hey, what about if I just start this? <laughs> uh, but I think it was something that was always an impulse that was always in my, um, in my being, this idea of taking fragments and parts of things and joining them. Because I have another bo body of work in the 90s where um, after I came from art school, I was working in Trinidad for some time, making paintings that I was not quite... Um, happy with you know like sort of failed paintings really and i started to cut them up um a bit frustrated or whatever but then i started to sew them back together and that became a big body of work for me my first proper body of work i think um and that was me like in the mid to late 90s and um when i think about it and i look at this work i can see the a similar impulse to bring fragments together um so it's been in my work for a long time. It's just that this particular material, you know, took a little while to um, evolve and become and look the way it looks now, you know, starting from simple experiments with single panels to joining it um, and to understanding that it gave me a certain amount of freedom, you know, to, um, to switch and change and uh, create a, a sort of um, staggered path to making a painting, you know, not the straight process where I'm making a drawing and then putting color in it. 
it's always a sort of, you know, meandering uh, process, which I really like. Um, and it's just how I prefer to make art. So it does fit a lot with my personality, I guess, um, at its core. Um, and there's so many, of course, metaphoric qualities to the idea of the quadrant, you know, the seasons, the cross, the cardinal points. And they're in my attraction to this format. You know, something about the balance of it, the four parts. Um, yeah, there's a lot. And maybe over time I will unpack that, you know, but certainly the, 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 the draw towards it for me is quite um, instinctive. And I think the, what it, how it manifests itself uh, in an aesthetic or in the, the formal part of the work is that it, it gives it a kind of tension, you know? The surface is never a complete surface. It's a broken surface that makes something complete, you know? Uh, and that push and pull of what is happening with the image is definitely um, intensified by the fact that these panels are separated um, and that I work on them in such a way. So yeah, it's become, you know, like I say, the identifying, one of the identifying or main identifying uh, qualities in, in, in my paintings. I use acrylics and um, dry pigment, dry pigment, so which, I, which I sometimes add to the acrylic or acrylic binders. And, um, and that gives it a, a particular kind of matte, saturated quality. People always ask about the oil, the oil, the oil sticks, you know. But I'm glad that I can get an effect like that without actually using it, which is kind of cool, you know. I mean, uh, the fact that the paint um, can take on different appearances, which is something I'm also interested in. That paint doesn't always have to look the same or to be consistent, you know. Um, I like the kind of inconsistency of what an, a surface can look like. Like you look at it and some parts might be smooth, some parts might be rough, some parts might be transparent, some parts might be opaque. And they all sort of like live together in this little space. Yeah, I'm involved in, in aspects of the carnival, um, both as a I guess as a masquerader or like a performer. Um, I've been interested in that for quite some time. Um, and I think generally, you know, Trinidad is a place that um, people are quite theatrical, you know, because we act things out, because I guess that's part of the whole masquerade um, culture in Carnival. So I think part of that has been has rubbed off into my work, you know, clearly. Um, I've I started using, um, even before this, I would say, body of work or working in this manner with the panels, I was making things around 2000, in you know, like the late 90s into 2000, early 2000s, where I was um, just making small performances, you know, to, to, you know, as little bits of poetry, really, of, with the body, um, photographing it or using video and using those, that material to inform paintings and inform other more static work. Um, and that process has stayed in my, in my uh, paintings, in my, pro in my practice, you know, since then. So I tend to use the body as a tool to draw out, um, you know, certain characteristics and, uh, nuances in poses and how the body looks and what it does you know and because i'm a little bit familiar with that culture coming from carnival and performing and stuff and using the body in that way um i've tried to to, to, to bring that to bear in in my paintings you know to use it as a tool in my paintings and um i found that to be um quite uh you know, to add a new dimension to making figures, you know, because I can really, um, it becomes a more intimate process. I can really um, internalize the poses 
and the shapes that the body makes, you know? I can really act them out and if, I, if there's something that I want, instead of seeking it out in someone, I act it out myself and that brings me closer to what I'm trying to do with the body, I guess. So that has been a very useful um, way of working, um, which I find, of course, ties in very much to Trinidad and, and to how we operate there. So it's good to have something that I guess is close to home that actually informs my painting and, and hopefully makes it, gives it something fresh that I would not have found in another place, you know? So it's like something that's very Trinidadian that is informing, um, you know, painting, which of course people do um, all over the world, you know? But it's how do you make it into something that is closer to your experience, I guess, yeah. I think Carnival is, is an uh, important um, phenomenon, you know, festival, you call it. I just, I feel it's almost bigger than a festival because I think it's, it's so laden with, um, with our own cultural experience and historical experience and social experience that it plays out many um, aspects of who we are, you know, as Caribbean people. So, but I feel, you know, and there are many layers to that, you know, the, the, the whole um, culture of resistance, um, which is at the base of carnival, you know, the Cambule, the, the, the push against enslavement um, and the celebration of the body, the, you know, the ownership of the body. Um, these are themes that have been in carnival for, from the inception and they still play themselves out today. So, um, yeah, so of course I'm, I'm, I'm naturally drawn to that narrative, but I think by and large, carnival is an inclusive space, you know, um, and an expressive space. So I feel those are the aspects that I find most important um, from a social perspective um, and from a creative perspective, because it allows one to create within it. Um, one can bring costumes, you can bring ideas to this platform, and it's open for that, so it should be used as such. So yeah, it's, a, it's, it's you know, so my relationship with it is, is one that I think is um, embedded in the idea of expressing things and expressing yourself and the inclusiveness of that process and the freedom of that process and hopefully carnival offers that so you know in that way it kind of works parallel to my painting process which i hope to also keep free and expressive and those were the important aspects of it for me um, as well of course as the historical um the historical narrative of carnival which is very much tied to you know just our identity as a place, you know, it's, 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 it's part of that history and it plays itself out in Carnival. Yeah, so so it's, a, it's a great snapshot of, um, you know, of Trinidadian culture, yeah. A lot of things are intertwined in that space. Yeah, much too much for us to get into in this interview, but yeah, <laughs> it's stuff that, you know, can be researched and looked at. All these different uh, traditions, I mean, some of them are, in a sense, undergoing changes, as uh, many things do. Um, but I hope that the, 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 the overall um, energy of Carnival, which is one of reinvention, um, uh, subversion, you know, um, play, satire, uh, and beauty, you know, that those things remain in it. So, yeah, let's, 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 let's work towards that. <laughs> and I've been involved in working, you know, with, in Carnival with, you know, I bring out a Juve band called Friends for the Road, which is, um, you know, this Juve is the beginning of the Carnival, which starts on Monday morning early. So I... I've always been involved with that area of carnival um, where we put, you know, mud on our skins and we use color as the sun comes up, you know, ritualistic, um, but also very um, both liberating and bringing people together 
you know, it's, it, 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 it's quite um, a, a kind of communal feeling when you are, you know, participating in an event like that, where we're moving through the streets together. Um, something about the mobility and the movement in, car in, in, in carnival expressions is also um, unique. You know, the fact that it's not a static thing, it's a thing that moves. It's interesting to see how sometimes that um, gets into what I'm painting um, and even how I'm painting it. I've been to Carnival in... Actually, I just came back from Carnival in Jamaica, funny. <laughs> uh, my first time. But um, other than that, I have been... Yeah, I've been to Carnival in London here um, a few times. Well, only twice, really, um, some time ago. Um, I've also been to maybe Labor Day Carnival in, in, in Brooklyn, uh, maybe once. Um, I've been to Carnival in Martinique, um, St. Lucia, some time ago. So yeah, I've seen variations of the carnival um, in different places. Um, I think what is interesting or telling, I should say, is that you know, anywhere the, that carnival travels to, it seems to take hold, um, not just of the diaspora community from the Caribbean, but it becomes a platform for, for other people um, and for a diverse uh, space, you know. So it's a, it's a kind of platform that works well in diverse spaces where people can bring different aspects of their selves um, into one, um, you know, arena. Will Smith is a friend of, well, he works, my, my very close friend of mine works with him. Um, a very close childhood friend of mine. Um, so he started coming to Trinidad with him. And, um, you know, being a, I think Will Smith is a, you know, a, a curious person. When I say curious, he has a lot of curiosity. He's interested in learning things and, you know, being open-minded to things. So, yeah, so he, he, he did, um, we did have a good cool rapport when he was there and one of the things that we did was um, that same method I told you about where I work with the body <clears throat> or I build an idea through a movement or a performance. I kind of threw that out to him and said, hey, you know, maybe I could, maybe, you know, we could work on a, on a, on a painting or some idea together. You know, you will do the, you'll be the body and um, what do you think you would do? You know, what would be the movement you would perform and that we, I could capture it and then I could build an idea or painting from it. And I think he had just done, um, he had just done that film where he played Muhammad Ali. <clears throat> um, so he didn't answer me. We, we were like at a, we went up by a house, you know, up on the, on the North Coast for the day. And I asked him that like early, early part of the day. And I said, well, think about it. And, you know, maybe before we leave, you know, if you get an idea, we will, we will do it. Um, or we will film it or take pictures of it or whatever. And um, before, like, so, so maybe like a couple hours, he, say, he came back to me and he said, yeah, I have an idea what we'll do. And it was like he just more or less performed as a boxer. So I ended up making, the, ended up making these paintings, uh, these two paintings. Um, and I also captured film of this, you know, these movements that he performed as a boxer, yeah. So that's what our little, kind of little creative thing we did together. And I did make a couple paintings. I was working on canvas in those days. Um, and those two paintings, uh, actually both of them belong to, now belong to a friend of mine who, is, who bought both of them, yeah. <laughs> That was a wonderful time um, and, you know, period for, I think, for all of us because we were working in a kind of communal building in the center of Port of Spain, um, in a sort of industrial zone. And um, <clears throat> we just, there were several artists working in the building and started showing um, films on, on Thursday evenings. And, you know, it, it was because we were there it was pretty easy, well, pretty easy to be consistent about it because we, it was just, you know, we spent time in the studio and every Thursday we would, um, we would choose something and send out an email and people started coming and it, it turned into a really nice, uh, you know, nice project that was ongoing for quite, quite a few years actually. Um, so in a sense it was, 
one of the defining uh, memories from that period um, being at the studio. Like I said, it was communal. So, you know, rarely in your life do you get to have experiences where you're that close to, you know, a group of artists um, over such a long period of time. Like it certainly hasn't happened since for me. Um, and it may not again, you know, because, um, you know, I tend to work solitary and um, I don't see that changing necessarily. So I'm really thankful for that time, you know, really thankful, yeah. I think everybody has a role in a community, first of all. <laughs> so I don't think because I'm an artist, I have a role, but um, automatically. But I think anybody who is, um, certainly people who are pursuing endeavors that are sometimes difficult um, and outside of the frame of what is sometimes encouraged. I don't think making art is something that's necessarily, um, a lot of people uh, may have a, a difficult time seeing it as a viable way of living, um, you know, and pursuing, you know, and living by and as a vocation. So, especially in a, tr in a, con in a conservative place, you know, that um, while there's a lot of creativity and things happening, um, deciding to live as an artist and a creative person is it's always been a, a difficult um, path, you know, as most people know, in any, any part of the world, and it's no different in Trinidad. So, um, so, so in, a, in a kind of way, my role is, is, you know, I don't know if I see it as a role, but, but quite possibly an example of somebody who's, you know, pursued something that they have felt strongly about. Um, and have just chipped away at it, you know? I mean, I think th that in itself is, is uh, hopefully a contribution to the space. Um, I also am, have always been very involved with, with um, <clears throat> the community in one way or the other, you know? Like I say, was saying earlier, you know, painting is a solitary pursuit. So I have tried to counterbalance that with things that are a little bit more communal, um, you know, I'm quite interested in music and bringing people together through sound. You know, my work in Carnival with the Juve has always been there. I do all the other projects. There's something I do recently called Selectors, where we invite um, uh, guests to share like 20 songs that, de that define them. You know, these are projects that I like because you know, they, they, they are interactive projects, you know, and they bring me out of the studio. So, you know, I don't know how I would rate them in terms of what they've contributed or anything, but I know that I've been part of the spaces that I've lived in. I also teach at the university in Trinidad. I've been teaching for about seven years now. So I kind of keep, you know, abreast, hopefully, with younger people and what they're, what they're doing. Um, and I enjoy it. I do enjoy the, the process of um, interacting with, with younger artists and sharing whatever I can about my work. I mean, I've always seen myself more as a practitioner than a lecturer. So I tend to interact with them as another artist, as a, as a practitioner, somebody who practices art, um, not just speaks about it. A small place always tends to suffer from, you know, thinking in a small way, you know, because it's small, you think, okay, well, you know, that just comes with the size of the place sometimes. It's an island, it's, you know. Um, however, Trinidad has always had, you know, sort of a connection with the outside world. We've had a great, and have a great um, tradition in literature, in music. Uh, so we have examples of, you know, how, how much scope we can explore uh, as creative people there. We always have had a good examples. I think people have to just, you know, I guess take themselves a bit more seriously sometimes um, and also not see Trinidad as your ceiling, you know, see yourself as a participant in the world. Um, I think maybe that's something that 
very quietly I have always felt, you know, without maybe speaking about it a lot. I've just felt like I'm not, I'm part of Trinidad, but I'm also part of the world. So whatever I'm saying automatically is being said to the world. Um, but it's just that I'm based in Trinidad and using my experience there to speak about my own, you know, sense of myself and my humanity and who I am. Um, and hopefully reflect the humanity that I see around me. So, you know, I think really once a community understands that it's what it's saying is not an uh, internal dialogue only, it's a bigger dialogue, then there has, it has the potential to, to become bigger, you know, and, and, and more relevant, um, both to itself, but to, 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 to outside. I mean, the more that I look into the place that I'm from and what I see around me and what I experience, the more I grow outside of that place too, you know. So I think the same thing is possible with a culture or society. Certainly there, there has to be um, ways for that to happen, initiatives, um, support, um, dialogue, you know, organization, uh, and some of these things are sometimes lacking in a place like Trinidad. Um, but certainly they can happen and they can, they can happen, you know, because once things start, you know, we, who knows where it can go, you know, but sometimes you just have to get a good start. And um, so let's keep our fingers crossed, <laughs> you know. And I think the two things co coexist, you know, um, because I am just as much present as an artist in Trinidad, as I'm an artist here sitting in London now, you know, um, and showing my work here. I tend to always present my work in Trinidad, you know, even in whatever context. I try to have dialogue about it. Um, so it feeds several situations, you know, and it can easily, and, and I think anyone working in Trinidad can be very much rooted there <clears throat> and still be relevant everywhere, you know, somewhere else. Um, yeah, I think, I think what you're saying too is that that sense of validation, which sometimes a small place looks to, to kind of come to terms with itself. So to come to terms with yourself, you feel like you need outside validation, you know? Um, I think I see it in a broader way. I just see it as, you know, artists want to communicate. They want to say something about something, you know? And the bigger that audience is, wherever it goes, it's fine, you know, because it's coming from somewhere. Um, but I agree with you that sometimes people, um, smaller places, neglect their own context and developing that context in favor of, you know, trying to make it somewhere else, you know. Um, and I don't think that's healthy. You know, I think we, you, 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 you know, you have to, you have to be um, generous and you have to be, you have to have the, the, the desire to build your, the space that you're working in um, and the local, if you would to to really f kind of feel any sense of ful fulfillment i think as a as a kind of living person in a space you know so um but like i said the two things do coexist in my in my eyes the the, the inside and the outside they coexist they, they, it's not one over the other it's one it's it, they both they, they both are relevant um and like I say, I've found, tried to find ways for me to, you know, operate in both spaces and to continue to operate in both, you know, because I'm operating here doesn't mean I'm going to operate less in Trinidad or do less things, you know, if anything, I can do more. Well, the last few years has been quite um, active, you know, before that, not so much, you know, but again, you know, this, this is the journey. I feel great. I mean, I feel excited about it. But like I said, this has been a good moment this last, you know, since the kind of COVID 
you know, a lot of things have happened. You know, I use that as the marker. I'll always remember that as a marker now for the rest of my life because that's when, you know, all these things open up. And I think, you know, one of the things that happened during COVID, I always tell people this, is that um, because things closed down, you know, the center of things sort of also spread in a different way because even the big places were closed down just as the small places like an island was closed down but so was london so people interacted through zoom and through digital means um, and it put everybody in the same playing field so a zoom interview or studio visit looks the same whether i was in trinidad or whether somebody was here right it was just the same platform um so the whole idea of having to go somewhere or being close to the center to have an opportunity sort of got equalized um, during that time at least you know um, so i think that worked in my favor uh, in the favor of people who operate in peripheral spaces um, because you know all of a sudden you know we're doing the same kind of studio visits that everybody else did um, so i think that that worked um, positively for me and it gave um, people a chance to see what I was doing and it's kind of led to this moment. So yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting moment and you know, one thing has, has given way to the other and I, I also see it as a beginning. This is like a, a, a start of something new. So at least that's how I feel about it. So yes, yeah, so I'm, so I'm really happy to be here. While I come from a completely different generation, um, I feel like the digital age, in a sense, has been a big part of how my work has been, um, has moved around spaces and how people have seen it and been drawn to it um, through Instagram and, you know, these platforms, which in a way become um, platforms where you have your own voice, you know. Um, it could be small, it could be big, but it's yours, you know, it, and it's, it's a first person kind of uh, projection of yourself. It's not a secondhand information or through any other means. And I like that. I feel that is a, it's, a, it's an opportunity to, um, to present your tone. And I think people have seen that and felt that somehow in what I've been presenting. And, um, you know, I would want now you know, if these paintings are in a place like London, for people to actually see the, the objects. Because, as you know, um, the act of looking at paintings is a visceral act, you know, it's a visceral thing. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's the next stage or the next step to see something in life, you know, rather than the screen. So that's what I'm, I'm hoping for it.